Over the past few months, I've been fighting a losing battle against non-stop projects while trying to stay organized. So for 2019, I plan to tackle some shop projects, the first of which is this drill press stand where the base of the drill press sits beneath the top surface, freeing up valuable surface area. It also has a vertical drawer to give you additional freedom for storing your tools. Another feature is a pull-out platform where you can use as a tabletop to keep important paperwork such as invoice, to-do lists, or plans so they don't get dirty, torn up, or lost in the shop. All right, let's get started. I started out by breaking down the large plywood sheets to more manageable sizes in my driveway using my track saw before taking them inside to my table saw where I cut the main cabinet size down to size and I just roughed out the other pieces which will be cut to fit later on. Here I'm applying some of these iron-on type edge banding to cover up the exposed plywood edges on the cabinet sides. They're not as durable as using hardwood, but they're quick and easy to apply for a project like this. I began the assembly process of the cabinet by drilling pocket holes on the two side panels as well as the underside of the bottom panel. After applying glue to the joints, I used some corner clamps to square up the panels and then clamp them together before tying the sides to the bottom using pocket screws. Next, I drill pocket holes into the two back panels and the vertical partition. The reason that the back panels are 3 quarter inch thick is because the shorter one will support the platform that the drill press will sit on. I kept the longer back support at 3 quarter inch just to keep things consistent. With the shorter back panel in place, I positioned the vertical partition using the top stretchers as spacers and then attached it to the bottom panel using glue and screws. Finally, I attached horizontal stretchers on top to tie everything together. Keep in mind that the pocket screws on these need to be offset differently so that the screws do not run into each other. With the cabinet complete, I moved on to cut the top panel, which I purposely made slightly larger than the cabinet so that I could flush it up later with my router. I fastened the top to the cabinet using glue and pocket screws, as well as a few screws through the stretchers. Lastly, I flushed up the top to the cabinet with my router and a flush trim bit. To support the heavy weight of the drill press below the top surface, I cut two additional 3 quarter inch panels for the sides. The height of these panels should be the same as the back panel, and the depth should allow for the drawer fronts to be inset of the main cabinet. These additional side supports will receive pocket holes the same way as the main cabinet sides. And then I also decided to apply glue to the entire face that will contact the cabinet sides. With the vertical support secured, I measured and cut the platform for which the drill press will sit on. With this platform sitting on the two vertical supports, I essentially just created a cabinet within a cabinet. Next, I clamped the platform down and secured it to the rest of the cabinet with, you guessed it, glue and screws. Since my garage floor isn't flat, I installed some leveling feet to keep the cabinet level and sturdy, but I also wanted the option to move it when necessary, so I installed these Rockler workbench casters. And what's awesome is that you can get these optional quick release plates that allow you to remove them when you don't need to use them, so they won't get in the way or take up additional floor space. 
If you look closely at this shot, you can see that I had to use a Forstner bit to drill out some recess for the caster bolts to sit in. This is because the bolts that came with the casters were too short for the two layers of 3 quarter inch ply on the right side. This is actually a good thing you see because if the bolts were long enough, then they would have gotten in the way of the drawers. Which was what happened on the side with the vertical drawer, and we'll circle back to that in a minute. Next, I used a 4 inch hole saw and a jigsaw to cut the slot for clearing the drill press column. And I followed up with a router and a roundover bit to knock down the sharp edges. To add some additional protection for the top, I cut and glued some half inch poplar around the edges of the top panel. With the cabinet complete and drill press sitting in its new home, I moved on to the drawer boxes, which are made of half inch ply for the sides and quarter inch ply for the bottom. And after the sides were cut to size, I set up my router table to quickly run all the boards through for a dado to accept the drawer bottom. I used a clamping square and dog holes on my workbench to square up the sides before gluing and brad nailing the three sides together. With the drawer bottom cut out, I just had to apply some glue in the dados, drop the bottom in, and glue up the fourth side. Rinse and repeat for the rest of the drawer boxes. Next, I moved on to making the writing platform, which was just made with a simple 3 quarter inch ply with your lumber of choice for the trim as well as for the cross supports underneath. I used what I had on hand for this, which was some leftover pine from the door I built a few months back. When gluing up the cross supports, I laid some off cuts on top to help distribute the clamping force. With the drawer boxes complete, I moved on to installing them by first installing the bottom drawer slide with an off cut as a spacer. Then I positioned the bottom drawer box about a quarter inch up from the base. And to attach the slide to the drawer box, I first pulled the slides out with the box in order to fasten two screws to either side. Then, I removed the whole assembly and added a third screw to each side to secure it. Referencing off of the bottom box, I stacked up some more spacers to help me position for the next set of drawer slides. And just rinse and repeat these steps all the way to the top. Since the writing platform is only about 1.5 inches tall with little to no gap to the drill press base on top, even though I managed to screw in the drawer slide simply by removing the drawer box underneath, it might be easier to use a flexible or an angled drill bit. Next, I moved on to making the vertical drawer box, which consists of three sides screwed and glued into one large panel. You may be wondering why I'm lifting the vertical drawer box so high, well this was a problem with the caster bolts I mentioned earlier. The bolts stuck through the side panel so far that I had to make the vertical drawer box shorter and lift it up above the bolts. If I had to do this over again, I would have put two blocks on the outside of the cabinet and used slack bolts instead. And 
And finally, with all the drawer boxes in place, I cut the drawer front from one piece of three quarter inch ply. Before attaching the drawer front to the drawer boxes, I first marked down and drilled holes for the drawer pulls. Here, I'm using some very expensive spacers to help me place the drawer front in the proper location so that I can mark and drill the corresponding holes in the drawer boxes. These holes are slightly larger than the ones drilled in the drawer fronts. This will allow me to make any additional adjustments before tightening down the drawer pulls, which will secure the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes. And once again, just rinse and repeat these steps for attaching the rest of the drawer fronts. But of course, we're not in the clear yet. When I went to attach the drawer front to the writing platform, I realized that the screws were too short since the trim around the platform was so thick. So I ended up using a Forstner bit to drill a recess into the front trim until a good amount of threads were exposed. Now that the cabinet is finished, I wanted to show you guys how to store tools and accessories in this vertical drawer, so I quickly rigged up something out of some scrap MDF to screw my pocket hole jig into. Then I made a couple of hanging cleats to hang the jig on the vertical drawer. It's so nice to finally have a permanent home for this little guy, plus all of my drill bits and screws. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this build, feel free to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you're like me in dire need of some shop organization, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at bevelish underscore creations because I've got a few shop projects planned for this year and would love to have you guys follow along. If you're interested in building this drill stand, I've got some links below to the tools and accessories I used in the build. And if you have questions, feel free to send me a DM. I will gladly help answer your questions. Once again, thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll see you guys next time.